Hi, my name is Julie. And my name is Cecily. We are part of the WHO Lab at the Tufts University School of Medicine. And we are currently practicing social distancing due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We work on a clinical trial to see if ticks can be useful for detecting residual Lyme disease bacteria after antibiotic treatment. Lyme disease is an infection caused by the bacteria Borrelia burgdorferi, and it is transmitted to humans by ticks. It causes a variety of symptoms, including rash, fever, headache, and arthritis. Most patients improve after taking antibiotics. The antibiotics kill a large percentage of the bacteria, and the immune system cleans up the rest. However, some patients continue to have symptoms after standard antibiotic treatment. It isn't known why these patients continue to have symptoms, but it is possible that for some, all of the bacteria have not been eliminated. Current tests for Lyme disease look for evidence that your immune system has come in contact with the Lyme disease bacteria by determining the presence of antibodies. Unfortunately, antibody tests cannot determine if all of the bacteria have been eliminated. Some investigators have found traces of the bacteria usually their DNA or RNA still present in the tissues of animals months after they have been treated with antibiotics. While this works for experimental animals, collecting these tissues from patients is difficult and risky. Some investigators have also used a procedure called xenodiagnosis to find evidence of the bacteria in animals after antibiotic treatment. Xenodiagnosis, our study procedure, is a way to look for the bacteria using the ticks that host them, Ixodes scapularis, also known as the deer tick. So why do we think this method could be better than current diagnostic tests? Xenodiagnosis takes advantage of the evolutionary relationship between the bacteria and the tick that makes the bacteria good at finding the tick. In this study, we are using xenodiagnosis to find out whether laboratory-raised ticks can be used to detect the bacteria in people who had Lyme disease and took antibiotics. We are interested to see if the presence of bacteria correlates with persisting symptoms in these individuals. Subjects who meet the criteria for the study will have about 30 larval ticks placed on them, either on the site of a previous characteristic Lyme disease erythema migrans rash or on the forearm. Yes, that's right. People are willing to let 30 ticks feed on them while they go about their daily business. These ticks have undergone thorough laboratory testing and do not carry any diseases that are known to be transmitted to humans by ticks. We're talking about really small ticks. Can you spot the ticks on this poppy seed muffin? There are five right here. This is how small the ticks are. These particular ticks are actually nymphs, which are larger than the larvae we use on study participants. Here is an image of ticks being placed on a study participant. See how small they are? Larval ticks are about the size of a period at the end of a sentence. Warning, real life image of real live ticks feeding on a real life human. Brace yourselves. Upon removing the ticks, inevitably, some ticks will have perished at the hand of the very sticky banded adhesive. Some may have stopped feeding, maybe they decided they just weren't hungry. And some ticks will have taken advantage of the meal they had in front of them, attached to the subject, and become fully fed. These are our favorite ticks. As many ticks as we can recover will be brought back to the laboratory. We allow them to sit in a humidity chamber for about a week to let the bacteria in the tick, if any, multiply. This makes it easier to detect. Then, the ticks are crushed in the lab and a variety of laboratory tests are performed on them. Xenodiagnosis will hopefully prove to be a useful diagnostic tool, able to detect Lyme disease in patients that have taken antibiotics. We are currently still recruiting for this study. Please search for Xenodiagnosis After Antibiotic Treatment for Lyme Disease on clinicaltrials.gov for more information.